Hey guys, Paul Riddick here. Welcome back to another edition of the Baseball Dads Podcast. You know, see if you could finish this these stories for me. What, how does the how does the 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 arc of a child actor's career go? Right, like you know, how does it start? It starts off like you know, cute kid, funny, can sing, can can dance, or has a TV show and some movies, right? And then they get famous at a young age, and they get paid a lot of money, and then then kind of well, how does the rest of that story go? Right? You, you could probably fill the rest in. You're, you're probably filling it in in your head right now, right? Like the first thing that happens is their fame starts to go away, right? And then they get weird, right? They get weird. And then their money kind of dries up, right? And then they're kind of, you know, then, then, then it kind of turns ugly, right? They go from weird to ugly, right? How many of these have we seen? They're so cliche, right? Like Gary Coleman and Lindsay Lohan and uh, I forget the other girl, Amanda or, or, um, or Danny Bonaducci, right? The Bonaducci, right? And you see that the arc goes like famous, rich, not famous, still has money, still trying to work, can't get work, runs out of money, weird, and then it's sometimes tragic, right? There's some really some tragic endings here. Are we so far off in baseball from that? It sounds crazy to make that leap, isn't it? From child actor to youth baseball player. Not so much, my friend. This is the cover of Time Magazine. Time Magazine. Crazy travel, crazy costs, crazy stress. How kids' sports turned pro. And this is a 10-year-old kid who plays on several elite travel teams across the USA. Are we not so far off from child actors? So, Because here's the thing. Here's why a child actor burns out. Because during the first, from zero to 13 is when the foundations, the patterns, the stories, the scripts of your life are kind of set. Not that they can't change from there, but they're set in those formative years from your zero to 13. And uh, it's uh, during that time, you're developing what they call a mirror neuron. And, and what that means is that basically the rest of your time, you kind of reflect back based on those foundations, those patterns, those stories, those scripts of that, of, the, of that early development. So that's why the child actor is so screwed up. That's why the child actor goes weird and then goes tragic. They go weird because they can't fit in society, so they become kind of outcast. So they go weird. Remember Britney Spears shaving her head, right? And then, then when they run out of money and they run everything, th- then it becomes tragic because they have no ability to survive and thrive in a world because their formal foundational years from zero to 13 are all screwed up their foundation was built on a shaky soft ground and now they have to go out into a world that doesn't think they're famous anymore doesn't think they're cute doesn't like their music anymore and now they have to survive remember that picture of gary coleman working at um, a security guard at a mall most of you dads will listen to this um, should remember gary coleman was the most famous actor on television what you talking about willis right he was the most faint the number one show he was the key and he's working he's a security guard in a mall and he had his fair share of problems and i, I believe he did pass away it's very it's it's tragic and and and, and here's a 10 year old kid on the cover of time magazine and, and god bless this kid i'm not gonna say his name you guys can can buy it if you want but it's just that's just my value <clears throat> but god bless this kid i hope it, i hope it does work out for him because this kid has twenty thousand instagram followers 20,000 Instagram followers. He gets asked for autographs. Here's my problem. We know that let's go, but let's go take Let's take the major leagues. Let's take the highest level. We know that a first round pick, a first round pick does not equal a major league player. We know that, right? I think it's 30%, something like that. Um, so 30% of first rounders don't, or, or whatever the number is, we know that a first round pick does not equal automatically equal major leaguer. We know that being drafted doesn't equal major leaguer. Right? We know that. So think about it. The top 30 the 30 teams in baseball are taking who they think is the best player available to them and most of, and and the and most of those players are not making it to the major leagues. So we know that doesn't equal. It. We know that a division 1 scholarship doesn't equal drafted. We know that a division 1 scholarship doesn't equal starter. 
We know that a high school All-State doesn't equal Division One scholarship. We know that starting on the high school varsity doesn't equal you're going to play in college. We know that a 13, 14-year-old travel kid does not mean high school varsity, All-State, and stuff like that. And we know that a 12-year-old kid in the Little League World Series does not equal a 23-year-old major leaguer. We don't see those, those best players in the world. We do not see them showing up on a major league field 10 or 12 years later doesn't happen there's only 20 something of them in this 60 year history i think it is of the little league world series don't quote me on that but i think it's 60 years so we know that doesn't equal it so what are we doing what are we doing the odds are this kid and god bless him i i hope you know i don't know if i hope it works out for him i what i honestly do is i I don't know. I see a 10-year-old kid. I see a kid who should be like picking his nose and, 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 and eating um, too many packs of Smarties and playing Xbox and running around with his friends. I don't, see, I don't see that a kid should be flying all over the country playing tournament games to make adults wealthy. We're going to talk about that in a second. I'm worried that the 10-year-old superstar doesn't equal the 16-year-old or the 17 year old or the 18 year old that plays varsity I'll say and again maybe maybe I, I don't hope he doesn't make it I don't know how I feel honestly there's part of me hope I do hope hope that he does make it that all this was worth it but then as I say that out loud I think I don't know is is it really worth your childhood I don't know look at Tiger Woods Look at Tiger Woods, you know, uh, if you read Andre Agassi's book, you know, this was not a fun time for him, his childhood, when his childhood was like this. Um, so again, as I say it out loud, I hope he does make it. I hope he doesn't make it. I hope he, I hope he finds another value as, as a person other than, than baseball, especially at 10 years old, when that, we're in that cru crucial window of development and you hear this, there's guys flying him in to play tournament games to win. So let me throw, you know, I'm worried that we're creating the next batch of child actors. That we're going to have some kids that are 15, 16, 17, and maybe they're not great baseball players anymore. Maybe everybody else has caught up because this is a genetically gifted kid. This isn't hard work. This is a genetically gifted 10-year-old kid, right? He's, he's genetically gifted, and when everybody else's genetics catch up, that's why we don't see the 12-year-old Little League World Series kid on the major league field 12, 10, 12 years later. That's why. Because everybody else's genetics catch up and the kid who's 5, 10, and 12, well, when everyone's 16, everyone's 5, 10, too. And that's, and that's kind of the, that's how it goes. I'm going to pray for this kid because I really feel like, um, I don't know, I feel bad for him. I do. Um, but here's, here's another thing. This might be a little bit far-fetched, but go with me here. If at the very least, I feel like my job is I've got a drum here, and I'm going to and I'm gonna beat this drum. Um, we have 400,000 uh, listeners. Um, I'm going to beat this drum. So does this go into the area of child labor? That's a pretty big connection, right? But let me, let me, let me give you some ideas. And I'm not taking anything that is not in this, right? The guys who run these tournaments that fly this, these kids in, right? They get paid entry fees. The guys who run the teams, they get paid. The coaches who run the teams, they get paid a lot of money in some cases. I personally know of several of these organizations well into the millions with instruction and academies and leagues and tournaments well into the millions. Uh, and there's probably many others that are very significant is it child labor? Hey, we have a lot of listeners, a couple hundred thousand listeners. Maybe there's a labor lawyer. Maybe there's somebody working for the Department of Labor, or maybe there's somebody, I don't know, that can look into this. But let me ask you a question. If you fly in a 10-year-old kid to a game so that you can win the tournament, so that your organization can get accolades and respect and publicity, and then you fly that kid back home, did you not exploit that kid for your own financial gain? Isn't that what child labor is designed to, to protect? It's the exploitation of children? This is the exploitation of children. It just is. It just is. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, I don't even want to go there. If, we, if, if, if there's adults profiting off of this at a staggering level, I think it's exploitation, and I think it crosses a line over into child labor. 
If anything, I think it endangers the well-being of a child, especially in today's age when mental health is such an issue and development is such a major issue. We know so much more about this. And let me also impact you that in this day and age of 24-7 news cycles, your Facebook feed puts different news and Yahoo and uh, um Forbes, every time you, you know, like they've got to cycle their news quick, right? Because people's attention span are low. Think about the weight that it must be for Time Magazine to put this on the cover because they, once this is out, they can't change the cover, right? They got to live with this for a week, right? So they got 52 shots. I think they do multiple covers sometimes, but whatever. They got 52 shots to sell magazines. This is to sell magazines. You know how they sell magazines? With shocking stories. This is a shocking story. This is a shocking story. In it now, I'm, I'm recording this in September of 2017. So, if you don't know, I don't think that happened yet. No, it did. September 4. This is September 4, 2017. So, there was a major, a, a, a horrific natural disaster in Houston, the hurricane. There's uh, a, Korea is firing nuclear missiles or North Korea, excuse me, North Korea is firing and testing nuclear missiles. And there's re major race issues and race relation problems in America. And on the cover of Time Magazine is crazy parents, crazy travel, crazy stress, crazy sports, crazy youth kids. This is what's on Time Magazine in this day and age. Now, we can make the, the, the there's a lot of issue with college sports and should college athletes be paid. I'm, I'm actually against college athletes be paid, but that argument's not good here because a college athlete gets a scholarship. College athlete gets gets meal money and gets food and gets taken care of and, and stuff like that. And um, that, that's another podcast discussion, but just bear in mind that once that college player gets paid by that university, the biggest issue that nobody wants to talk about is then that, then that college player is an employee of that university. And then that changes the game. It changes the rules. It changes their conduct. It changes um, um, whether they can, yeah, their, their class, it changes everything. Once they become an employee of that university, employees can't go to frat houses and party with students. Okay, so it changes the scope. There, there's so much more to it too. And plus you're talking about this many college athletes. You're talking about, uh, you're talking about maybe uh, a, a 50 or so college and, and uh, football teams and college basketball teams that are, that are really in this category. Most of college athletics and most of athletic teams are not profit generating things. Yes, they do. I get it. They make a lot of money for the university. I get it. Yep. And there certainly can be some things to put in place, but um, healthcare and otherwise, but as far as paying them, no, um, that is it that, cause then that, then this is next, <clears throat> right? This is next. Is this kid going to get paid to come play on this tournament team that will win a championship for this guy who runs this tournament, who makes a couple hundred grand running the tournament and all the coaches that have organizations that make into the millions with their organizations. Is that, is this kid get paid? What is this kid worth now? This now we're getting into a topic of exploitation, right? Can you imagine if we're turning dollars and cents, what's this kid worth? This kid's a human being. This kid's a heart. This kid's somebody's son. This kid's someone's brother. This kid, this, this kid deserves more. Like I said, I think he should be picking his nose and telling fart jokes and, and running out in, in, in the backyard and, and um, playing Xbox and, and eating too much pizza. You know, things that, that kids do. And being a part of this community um, it's important. So I ranted a little bit on this one. I'm sorry. It's pa I'm passionate about this because I know we're not going to change tournament baseball. But again, what I don't want to do is that we just we. It, I don't want it to become the wild wild west. And I can't change it. And maybe it will still become the wild wild west. But like I said, I got a drum. I'm going to beat it while I can. I'm going to give um, what I think is my opinion about it. Um, I just hope this young man. I, I, like I said, I'm gonna pray. I'm a man of faith. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pray that this young man, um, that things go in his go in his favor and go in his direction. And uh, that's all I got today, guys. So thank you guys for tuning in. Going over to five six seven dad dot com. Check out the book. It'll be out soon. Um, and uh, I really appreciate you guys paying attention and listening. Thanks. <laughs>